How will Christchurch students and staff be affected by climate change? So climate change is going to affect us all, but we're not quite certain how, and the effects are going to be unpredictable. At a local level, what we'll notice is certainly changes to the weather and changes to the climate over periods of time. But around the world, we're already seeing bushfires, droughts, more severe hurricanes and uh, hotter summers, all sorts of things going on, which are the foreshocks of much more significant changes, which we know are going to be in the pipeline and which we are already committed to as a result of past uh, uh, pollution. So climate change will certainly affect the physical basis on which we depend. And the point about it is that it's not going to just affect the weather and maybe cause floods in Canterbury or maybe we'll get a very hot summer or whatever, but it's also going to affect food production because plants obviously depend on the weather round about them, and having enough rain, having enough sunshine and so on at the right time of the year. So you can begin to see that it's going to have economic impacts. And those e economic impacts are then going to spill over and are already spilling over into human lives. So underlying, deeply underlying the Syrian conflict, for example, that's been going on for 10 years, was a long-term long drought in that part of the world. And it was, it's actually quite significant that the Arab Spring, which again happened about 10 years ago, was triggered by food prices. It was the rising prices of food, which people said was unacceptable. So you can see that economically, uh, because we've got a global economic system, that climate change is going to knock the economic system off kilter, and knocking the economic system off kilter has an effect on the way in which people live their lives. And sadly, it looks as if uh, one of the responses which people tend to come up with is to become more extreme, to become xenophobic, to uh, look to self-survival, rather than looking outwards towards, well, what can we do as a human community to address these problems? But battening down the hatches isn't going to work and obviously isn't going to work, although that's a very natural reaction. So coming back to what this means for us in Canterbury, what it means is we need to think about in the university about how we can come up with dramatic and, uh, and imaginative and creative solutions uh, to deal with uh, a crisis which is uh, unfolding in lots of different ways. And to recognize that climate change is, inter is an in part of an interrelated set of problems that involves the decline of biodiversity, which involves uh, uh, the erosion of soils, which involves, in one way or another, pandemics. It's quite possible that the pandemics that we're getting at the moment, because we're getting more and more global pandemics, are being made more likely by climate change. And so what is in the pipeline? We simply don't know what's in the pipeline. It could be health issues, it could be a storm which does terrible damage or whatever, but climate change has effectively signaled something which uh, on a geological time scale uh, has, uh, uh, m makes sense as it were. For the last 11,000 year odd years, we've lived in the Holocene, which is a period of very stable uh, conditions in which human beings has been able to flourish. Uh, as a result of pollution and, and as a result of the use of the way that we've uh, uh, emitted so much CO2 into the atmosphere and other gases, we've effectively evicted ourselves from that stable period. And we're now in a new ecological epoch, which people are beginning to talk about. They're calling it the Anthropocene, the period where human activity has now got geological in impact. And we're now in a much more unstable and unpredictable place and coping with that is one of the challenges for the future, a key challenge.